right, so let's back up a little bit. And um, on Monday, I started to show, again, I'm showing you how to build a table and a lamp. But I want to take it really from start to completion. And that means when you have your final rendering with surfaces, so it looks like a real table, it looks like a real lamp. It's pretty believable. I mean, yes, there, when we get done with it, there are things that need to be quick. But you'll, it's not going to look just like a simple wire frame, a simple cube kind of piece that was put together with Lego. So, um, does everybody remember? Make sure that the plugins aren't there. Where to go? And make sure that you have all of your tools here. And if, when you select the Create tab in Modeler, if it comes up short, you only have a handful of the tools, and you know that they're missing, and you need to make sure that the other plugins or for the rest of the tools are connected. Um, make sure that you have four up, like I do here. Everybody know how to change that? If it's not pull up? Everybody remember? You hit D for display. Let me go back here. Here's the layout. Is the first tab. And by default, set to quad view. You can recall there are lots of other views that are available. But for us, quad view I think will work quite nice for us now. Um, I would strongly recommend that you have your numeric requester up and your point statistics. Or, depending on what you have selected, your polygons are well. statistics visible over on the right hand side. Because I'll be working back and forth as I build these <coughs> objects by building them by hand and at the same time using the numeric requester to refine the shapes to get a pretty good sense of size even though all size is relative to um, you. It will help me as I will to know that each of these shapes relative to one another are size. So I'll start again by building the table. And I'm going to start by building a little bit like a little card table or end table or something like that. Um, and if, to get the plugins, go to utilities. Select edit plugins. Then you don't add plugins, you scan directory. Make sure that you select the hard drive, the computer, the applications. Within applications, go to Lightweight 8, because that's what we should be in right now. And then you'll see a folder inside Lightweight 8 titled plugins or main plugins. Do not select anything in it, just that folder, and then click open. And if any plugins are missing, it will show you in just a moment. It will say, oh, these are found, so many files, click OK. Notice that it didn't add any to mine. And then if I'm done, I'm done, and you'll notice a bunch of them here added, especially in the create tab. <coughs> Okay, so with the box selected, I'm going to move over to my numeric requester and select reset and activate. And by default, when you do that, it, it, it gives you um, a cube from one meter by one meter by one meter cube. So what if I wanted um, to change this now? Instead of a cube, I want to make my tabletop. If I'm happy with the one meter, so that's about a yard by yard. It's, not a, it's like a card table, a little bit smaller. Um, but if I wanted to change the height of it, I could use my spinner here to the right in the numeric requester. Notice that it's getting thinner and thinner. Or if I move it to the right, it's getting fatter and fatter. I can also highlight this in here. And even though it's in millimeters, centimeters, or meters, I can use any unit of, unit of measurement and it will automatically translate. So if I decide that I want a two inch thick tabletop, all I have to do is type two and then shift, double quotes, and then hit the tab key. And that translates, two inches translates to 50.8 millimeters. OK, 
Okay. Everybody got that? Or not? These little left and right arrows to the right, I call them spinners because if you click and drag left or right, it will change the settings. And that's one way of changing. You can actually click and drag and highlight the type in there and put in whatever settings you want. Or I can come back in here and by hand I can click on these widgets and move them up and down and stretch them to the size that I want. And I will see that whatever changes I've made reflected in the um, numeric toolbox. Uh, the next thing I want to do, because by default when you build an object, when you reset it, it puts it in the middle of your the universe that you're creating. So what I want to do is I want to move the center up along the y-axis, correct? Because I want my tabletop to be about 30 inches above the floor. Because I'm going to use the x-axis here is my floor. That's where I want everything to sit. So what I'll do here is where it says center is I'm, I'm going to put in 30, shift, double quotes, so that's 30 inches, and hit the tab key, and that moves it up 30 inches. If I'm happy with those settings, I can go ahead and I can turn off the box tool because now I'm done and it's fixed in space. And there is my tabletop. The width and depth is one inch. Say again? Width and depth. What's the height? It can be whatever you want. I made mine one meter by one meter by two inches thick. Okay. Size is unimportant. What is important when you're building in your objects and you're using just your eyes to determine the visuals, um, proportions become can, can become significant. You know, one one height depth width relative to another. And that when you look at it when you're done, it'll look like, well wow, that's a really chunky looking table. Or the proportions look strange because you can't relate to them to what you've seen in the real world. So, bottom line is if it looks right, it's right. If you want to be really accurate and know what the proportions are, you use the numeric requesters and you take actual measurements off whatever object that is you're trying to build. And you use those and you know that your proportions will be accurate. Otherwise, it's like in a drawing class. You know, you don't sit there and you don't measure everything you're drawing, you look. You know, you look at whatever it is, it's still like for drawing it. You look at your sheet of paper and you look back and you keep looking back and forth and you make comparisons and you try to get the approximate proportions of the Okay? Any other Now, before I move on and build the table legs, this is something that I haven't done before, and this is what I want you to get in the habit of doing. Every time you finish with a part on whatever it is that you're building, what you should do is put a placeholder in there for the surfaces. It's not going to look, I mean, I can make this tabletop look like wood, I can make it look like glass, I can make it look like marble, I can make it look like any material I want. Right now, it's just a generic white-looking, gray-looking box. But what I want to do is assign a specific surface to that, and I'll call it tabletop. Right? And so this is what you do when you're done. And every part that you make that's going to have a different surface will have a, they will all have a surface. I'm going to assign something as a placeholder right now. And this is what you do. Again, because nothing is selected, everything is selected. So if I hit Q, Q, that's an important keystroke. What that allows you to do is to change the surface of this. This cube has how many potential surfaces? Six. 
six. Again, because I don't have any one surface selected, any one polygon, it's going to apply it to all of them. But if I wanted every side of this to be different, I could select one polygon at a time and assign a different surface. So instead of default, I'm going to name this table five. Like so. And then I can either click and drag on any one of these three RGB color settings, or I can click here. And that brings up a color picker. I'm going to move over here in this realm, and then I'm going to make it brown. You can make it whatever color you want. Blue, green, yellow, it doesn't really make any difference. The next thing I'll that I need to do is deselect make default. I do not want to see my default surface texture. I want that generic white, gray, whatever it is to be my default surface texture that I can use for just as a placeholder for other things that I do. Okay. Now when I click OK, watch what happens. It turns it brown. Now, if I want, and it depends on your work habit, if I select surface editor here, you'll notice under this unnamed model, I have a surface name table type. And I can come in here, and this is what we're going to do in a little bit. We're going to start the tailor, and we're going to customize this. And we can change its specularity settings to make it reflective, to make it shiny, to if it's glass, make it transparent. There's all sorts of stuff that you can do. <coughs> also, under Windows, we should have a preset panel. And if you don't, sometimes it means that the computer wasn't, or the program wasn't um, um, installed properly. And we click under Workspace, you'll notice that we have lots of other default settings that we can use in here for fabric, for glass, for metal, um, rocks, strange textures, all sorts of stuff. Okay, but I don't want to worry about these just now. I'm putting in placeholders. It doesn't look like wood, it doesn't look like glass, it doesn't look like anything. It's just a brown color, that's it. So now I'm ready to build, yes? How, how did you apply the brown to the tabletop? I hit Q. Oh, no, no, I'm in Surface Editor. You oh, in Surface Editor, you'll notice that now we have under my unnamed file, we have two surfaces. We have default and we have the one that I just assigned tabletop. Okay. So now for every surface you create, there will be, it will be visible there. You can select and you can edit at any time you want. And then just simply turn it off. Okay. Just find brown in the color circle. Just find brown in the color circle. Find, yeah, brown is blue. It doesn't matter what color it is. Really, before I go on too, too far, I should probably save my file. So I'm going to go to file, save object as, and I'm going to click here to scroll down. And I want to make sure on my, I have, remember I have a folder on my desktop named content. I did. What happened to it? Nothing's on my desktop. Well, so, is it turning off mine too? What are you doing? I'm trying to get the password. Well, no, no, no. What I'm looking at is that my desktop is clear, and I saved a bunch of stuff on it. When you save stuff on your desktop, it goes away. I guess they left the settings the same for mine now. But if I put anything on my desktop, it goes away. So um, I'm going to have to get a flash drive for myself. So I expect that I'm going to lose some things today. So I'll click and create a new folder, and I'll call it content. And inside my folder, I will create a new folder. And I'm going to name the objects. 
then we'll create another new folder and then name it images. And whoops, I didn't want that. And I want another new folder, um, scenes. I'm going to go up here, here again, select this one, and name that image. So inside my content folder, I have images, objects, and scenes. This is an object, isn't it? I'm going to get rid of this in a minute. And I'll name it table. So now I'm ready to build the legs. Um, to make things easy on myself from the start, what do you think might be helpful so I don't actually interfere with what I've already created? Oh, choose a new layer? Yeah, use layers. So I have my layer tabs up here. We have many more than 10 layers. These are just the 10 default layers. If you go to Windows and you select the Layers panel or hit F7, it will bring up another panel. And if you like having that up, you can go ahead and under the table, you'll see that we have, as we build layers, we can name them, we can add layers. So not only do we have these 10, we can have many more afterwards. So I'll go ahead and I'll select the second one. But in order to determine the size and placement of my legs, I need to see the tabletop in the background. Don't I? So if I click on the bottom half of the first one, notice that it becomes visible in black outline. Anytime you see a layer in black outline, it denotes that it's in the background. If you see it in, at least in the perspective view, in textured wireframe, then that means it will be in the foreground. You can, you can have as many layers as you want, but you can only have them in the foreground or the background. And that's it. On the window, and it says layers account. But all you have to do is click up here and add it. So now I have my second layer selected, and I'm ready to build the legs. So I want to zoom in a little bit in my top view. Okay. Uh, if, if I want to uh, mess with the size of a table, is it possible? Yes. When it's done, you can change it. You can always change any of these things. Some things are easier to change than others. But when I'm done with this, let's do that. Let's change the entire table size. Let's change parts of the table. It depends. If, it, if they're on the same layer and you don't have anything selected, yes, they will all change at the same time. If you only have the tabletop selected, meaning those six polygons and they're on the same layer, then only those six polygons will change. If you're on separate layers, for example, I can select both of these layers by holding down the shift key, like so, and now they're both in the foreground. You can have multiple layers in the foreground. Um, and then when I resize them or move them, they will both move. If I don't have them, and this is only in the background, then when I make the legs, only the legs move. I will also temporarily leave these layers separate with the legs in the tabletop and send it over to layout and show you what happens when you have separate layers that go over to layout, that they are independent of layout which can be confusing sometimes because you may want to move just move the whole thing and you accidentally only move part. So you'll, when you're done, depending on what kind of object you're building, you may want to, when you're finished, put everything you might get the other day on any single way. So now what I'll do, zoom in a little bit more, and I'm going to make cylindrical legs, if you want to make them rectangular, if you want to make them, I don't know, any other shape you want, would be my guess. But, you know, consider proportions, consider that 
they need to go from the, the tabletop to the x-axis, which will be our floor. So what I'll do is I'll select the disk, the disk tool, which is our cylinder tool. Um, I'll start by working from the top view and clicking and dragging. Get these little spindly legs. So I want to look over to my numeric requester because I want the x and the y axis to be the same. Why is that? It'll be a perfect circle, won't it? If I want them to be elliptical, then I would go ahead and I'd make them different. Now notice over in, from the top view, you can't tell whether that stretched all the way to the floor or not. But when we look at the back view, when we look at the right view, we can tell we've just made a disc on the floor, haven't we? Now, I could either use the numeric requester, but I think it's easier just to click on either the back view or the right view and drag and pull the cylinder up until it intersects the tabletop. Now I know that, that the leg reaches the floor and it also reaches the underside of my table. And I'm not looking at sizes per se. I'm looking at, I mean, if you want the, the table to be exactly for the, the leg to be exactly two inches in diameter, or one inch in diameter, or four inches, or whatever, you can put that in, but I'm just now using something that looks right. It looks appropriate size for the table size. Uh -huh. Can you show us to get out of this? Okay, um, let me finish with the legs, and I'm going to go on another layer and show you, because it will be easier to do it that way. Now, what I can do is fix this in space, and then I can always copy and paste to make duplicates that are the same. You want, if, had, if you have four legs on a table, you want them all the same length, don't you? the same size. Otherwise, you get a table that kind of teeters. You know? well, the easiest way to do this is to make duplicates on the fly. Um, and a, most of you should have a three-button mouse is that what you can do, and if you don't, then you're going to use the command key, which is the Apple key instead. What I'll do from the top view is that I will right click, or command click, is the case, is on the top and drag. And when I do, notice that it makes a duplicate of this. Now, this one is resizable, but the first one is fixed in, in space. I'm going to repeat that two more times to build my additional two legs. I will right click from the top view and move down and right click and move my mouse to the left and move it over. Now to fix the last table leg, I turn off the disc tool. Now I have my four table legs. I know that they're all identical in size. And I can see by just moving them from the top view that they all are placed pretty nice, you know, they're distributed pretty nicely and they line up you know, pretty well too. So now before I go any further, before I show you how to move that tabletop again, what I want to do is that I want to put a placeholder in here for the surface of the legs because I want the legs to be different. <laughs> than the tabletop. Even if I wanted them to be the same, uh, if I wanted them to be the same, maybe I would have started my naming differently. If I was going to have wood, glass, whatever. So anything that I assigned a wood texture, I would name wood. Anything that I had a glass texture, I would assign glass. Or whatever. But I'm not doing it that way. I would prefer to name each part differently. And even if they have the same surface properties, you know, I can change them later on if I so choose. Because what if I named them both wood and later on the client said, or I decided, you know what, I want the table legs to be chrome. I don't want them to be wood. And if I use the same texture for the top as the legs, if I change it for the legs, then it's going to change the top too. Now I can keep them independent and I have the freedom to change whenever I want. Again, on this layer, because nothing is selected, Everything is selected. When I hit Q, it 
brings it up. And it has the last setting. This one is, which was the brown. This one I'm going to make, um, I'll name the table the legs. And I'll click on the little bit color and I'll make them blue. Why? Just because it doesn't really matter. They're just placeholders. I should go ahead and save again, the save object. Yes. Let me, um, you want to know how to move the table to the tabletop before you finished it? Is it that was your question, I think? Uh, yeah. Okay. Afterwards, I could still move it. I can switch to this layer and put this one in the background by holding, by clicking down here, right? Now, only the tabletop is selected because, not, you know, I only have that layer selected. And we can hit T for move, or I can go to modify and select move here. And now, when I move my mouse, I can move it up. I can move it down. I can move it to the left. I can move it to the right. Right? You can move wherever you want. So it's not permanently fixed. It helps if you can work efficiently and to, to minimize what you know additional things that you have to do. Now, since I've saved this, watch what happens when I send this over to layout. If I send the object to layout, it brings in my page. Doesn't it? But at the bottom, you'll notice here under item. Mm -hmm. How did you send it over to layout? See the little button in the upper right hand corner? I can go back to modeler and oh, switch to layout. Hypothetically, the hub should be working. If, it, if, it, if you can't do this, then there's I'll something wrong with the hub. The hub is that third program that is supposed to work seamlessly in the background to allow you to go back and forth between modeler and layout. And the reason we have to go to layout is because in Modeler, there are no lights, there are no cameras, and oftentimes you cannot um, actually refine surfaces to the extent that you can in layout. And this is a pretty old traditional way that programs work. Um, I don't think mine works this way. Alias A way front. Anybody use um, um, Green Studio Max? Anybody try that? I don't know whether they have a separate layout. But look at the bottom. I switch and I go over to layout. You'll see under items selected, it says table. But you'll notice I can select table layer one or table layer two. So if I select table layer one, I only have the tabletop. And notice that it's not fixed. I can move it up, down, around. And if I want to do that, great. But if I don't, if I just plan on moving the table like I would in the real world, I hope when I lift the tabletop that the legs don't fall off. And you know, I leave the legs behind when I move the table. You know, oftentimes for me, it helps me to think in literal terms that way. So I know, wait a minute, I want to make sure that these guys are nailed on or glued on somehow. So I'll go back to Modeler. And to remedy this, to fix this so that I glue them together now, I'm going to select and make the, the leg layer in the foreground. I don't need to see the front. It doesn't matter. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the legs from my working area here, put them on the clipboard, and then paste them in the first layer. There. I don't need them separate. So to do that, I hit Command X for cut. I select the first layer, and I hit Command V for paste. 
And notice that when it does, when you do cut and paste, that it remembers the exact size and placement in that 3D world where you put those. It does not move them at all, which is advantageous. That's what you want. So now I'm going to save it again. Correct. Well, when you hit Command X, that's not deleting it, it's cutting it. There is delete, there is, there is cut and copy. Copy leaves it there, and then when you copy it, it takes, it also takes a copy of it and puts it on the clipboard, but it leaves one there. And you don't want duplicates. Right? You, you want to actually move it into the future for a moment and then place it back down. Does everybody understand the difference between copy and cut? Anybody not? Copy it's, the same, it's the same principle in 2D. Uh -huh. How do you paste again? Is it Command V. V is in Victor. Apple V. Now, is it is it part of that? Is it locked into that layer? When we when we go into layout, it will all move as one piece now. Yes. Okay. Now when I when I now when I switch, I've already, I, I don't need to send it over again. I've already sent it over once. So I'm not going to say send object to layout because before you know it, you're going to have multiples over there. You don't want that. I just need to switch the layout. Okay. And now you'll notice when we look at the bottom table layer one, you'll notice that there isn't another one. It's just that one object. And now when I move it, the whole thing moves together. Uh -huh. What do you have selected so that it has that outline around it? That I have it? the object itself selected because at the bottom, we'll get to that. You'll notice at the bottom in layout, it has objects, bones, lights, cameras, properties. Okay. Because we're not animating, we don't need to deal with bones. If you're in Chris's class, you're going to work with bones. Here, I have objects selected. If I wanted to move or modify my camera, I would make sure the camera is selected. Notice that it's selected. If I had multiple cameras, while camera is selected, I would have multiple options here as well. Likewise, when I add lights, by default, you can't see. If I zoom out or I switch, let's just zoom out. See the default light up here? If I had multiple lights, the same thing. It would list all of the different lights that I have, and you could select them independently. Change the property, same, change the intensity of the light, the color of the light, fall off, anything you want. Okay, so I'm going to go back and model. Now we're ready to build the land on top. Now, this is what I do. And I prefer to, I'm going to make a copy of the table and put it in a new file just to use as a temporary placeholder. Because I want my lamp relative to the table to be an appropriate size. If I use it in, without having to actually make measurements, I know how big my table is and I can create a new object now, work with a clean slate, and in my numeric requester, I know how big the table is, so I figure if it's only 30 inches by 30, in, or one meter by one meter, um, if I make a one foot diameter lamp, that's pretty big, that's a third of the table. You know, but even so, when you're thinking about it, it you know, is that the right size or not, you're not sure, right? So I'm going to actually have a copy of the table in there, just as a placeholder, while I'm building the lamp. And then when I'm done building the lamp, I will delete the table. And I, they will become separate objects that I will import into layout. And I think that is a better way to go. So that later on in layout, what if I want multiple lamps on a table, if I want multiple tables, I have my shopping list, and I can use them infinitely. I have an infinite supply of them. All you have to build is one. If I want to build a forest, I don't have to build a thousand trees. I only need to build one and bring all the others in. I can, you know, the same one, just duplicate it. And I can resize them, and I can, you know, squash them and change them a little bit, and they'll look slightly different. And that's all I need to do. 
depending on what you're doing though, it, you do need to make variations like the trees and plants, but then it looks too CG. They look too too much alike, too computer graphic. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you had a question. Say again about the table. If I want to change, if I want to change the table now, I can either do it here or I can do it in layout. If I do it in layout, either way, it will automatically update because it's awesome. If I want to stretch this, if I decided I don't want a rectangular table anymore, maybe I want to make a copy of it. Now I want to make a dining room table, one that's stretched the way I want to do it. So what I can do here is maybe zoom out a little bit, and with everything selected. What I will do, I probably want to separate the legs from the table, the tabletop again. But I'm going to see what happens just for the heck of it. I'm going to switch to modify. I'm going to select stretch. Um, when we get to all of the modify tools, you'll see that typically there are two tools for each function. Stretch and size are really similar to one another. When you select size, it uniformly changes the size of an object. It will change the height, width, and depth uniformly and keep the, the proportions linked to one another. When you use stretch, it only will change, depending on your directions, two of the dimensions at any one time. So I don't have to make everything huge. It's just like a change in selected proportions. So if I select stretch and I'm going to go from um, mode and I'm going to say yeah, action set the center of selection, which is everything, and I'll click from the top. And notice that when I change it, notice what's happening. It also is distorting the legs, and I don't want that. I mean, maybe I do. Maybe I want these elliptical legs, and I don't care. <clears throat> but if I only want the tabletop to be stretched, then what I need to do, since I put them both on the same layer, it might be easier if I switch. I'm already on polygons. If I select one of the polygons on the table and then move to um, uh, view, and then under selection, select connected. Because all of those six polygons are connected, they will, they're all selected now. Now I can go back to modify and I can select stretch. And now I can put it here and I can stretch it out. But so, so now I have a different table. And when I'm done, I turn it off and I move outside and I deselect it. Now if I want to select the legs, it gets a little bit harder. That's why I say sometimes it's best to make them on separate layers and pull them on. Um, what I can do from my back or right view is right click and lasso around those. And notice I've selected just the legs and not the tabletop. So right-clicking and lassoing around something will select them all. And I believe I have everything selected. Now, this gets a little tricky, but um, I think I'm going to do it efficiently here. If I select Turn On Symmetry now, and I go ahead and I select Move, and because um, sim the way symmetry works, you have to be careful when that's turned on and off, or that can help you, or it can really mess up your model. I mean, really mess it up. Symmetry only works when you have everything on the left and the right hand side of that x axis the same. So now what I can do with move selected, I can click and drag and move that over. And notice that the other one is moving over in time. It will, as I move this one over on the right, then it will move it over to the left. It will do it automatically. And when you're done moving, you have to remember to turn symmetry off unless that's something that you want to do. So now I've created a brand new table. 
If I want, I can copy that or save as and save it as a dining room table. So I have end table, dining room table, you know, without having to do a lot of changes. back to um, layout, if I switch to layout, because it's that same object, notice that it automatically updates. Presets, go to window, 
hand. Preset should be the second one near the top. And this is what it looks like. And by default, workspace should be available. So I'm going to hold the button here on workspace, and I'm going to look under here, and let's look at some other things here. Let's look under rock and see what we have. Uh, we have marble. So I let's, I've decided that I want um, my tabletop to have a marble texture. Well, it doesn't matter which texture you choose. It's more important that you understand the process. And then I will stop, and then I'll let everybody finish their table, and then we'll move on to the lamp. Does that make sense? We'll see that. Or maybe I want it made of jade. It doesn't matter. I mean, there's, all kind, there's all sorts of textures in here. Maybe I want it made of grunt. Lava rock. Who knows? You can do some pretty wild stuff with this. So, making sure that I have tabletop selected here in my surface area, I select over in um, presets the one that I want, and I double click on that texture. And as soon as I double click, it will replace whatever texture I have here with the settings that are in presets. If instead of rock, you want metal, or if you want glass, if you want a glass tabletop, you know, maybe you want a smoky glass tabletop, this one down here. You've got all kinds of different glass here. Maybe you want to look at some others. Maybe you want it made of metal, like you want it made of brushed chrome or something. I don't know. You want it to look like it's made of gold or iron. Or, I don't know. There's all kinds of different textures that you should look at that are very nice. And when we get to surfacing, it will be important that we look to these to use them as a guide so that we can deconstruct these and understand how to build our own surfaces. I don't want it made of fabric. I don't know. Cowhide. I don't want my tabletop to be stretched in cowhide. Here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to use that. Make sure the tabletop is selected here. Make sure that I have cowhide over here. And I double click. It says load settings. Yes. Now you'll notice it still looks like a gray texture over here, doesn't it? If I switch from textured shaded, Actually, I don't. I mean, that's as good as it's going to get in OpenGL. There's only two ways that I can actually see what this is going to look like when it's finished. And that is when I use something called Viper, which we'll use on another day, or if I render this. <coughs> to render this, let's go ahead and fix the legs. And let's do the legs too, and then we'll do that. So now I'll select legs, and I'm going to switch from fabric and I'm going to go to metal, and let's make them brushed, um, brushed chrome or something. It's still, it's still separate. Yeah, no, yeah. Mine are still, mine is what is one thing when I go to model, when I go to uh, uh, layout. I'll have, let me finish and then we'll take a peek. I'll So now I'm going to make this one brush chrome, so I'll double click. And now it's assigned it to brush chrome. It doesn't look very shiny, but that's okay. There's, there are ways that we can fix that. And again, in OpenGL, it doesn't look very special. But when we go ahead now, and I'm ready to render, um, I should really, let's switch to from perspective view to camera view. This is what the camera sees. It's as if we were, you know, because it's by default, it's set right in front of the object. So I really need to move the camera, don't I? So I get a better view of this. Unless I wanted to 
illustrate something was, that was maybe from a dog's perspective or some, you know, maybe a cat or a little animal. You know, I mean, that, that's, this is the way they see the world. <coughs> so what I want to do now from camera view, because this is what this is what we'll actually what we'll actually see when we when we render it, when we get a snapshot of it. At the bottom, I select camera, and then I go to modify, and I'll select move. And now, when I move the mouse forward, it brings it closer. If I want to move the camera up, I hold down the command key, and I drag the mouse forward again. And now, notice that it's moving the camera up. It's just moving it straight up. But now when it gets out of my line of sight, I need to rotate the camera. So I'll go ahead and I will select rotate. And I'll go ahead and rotate. So that I see more of a three-quarter view. And I hit T for move again. And I move it over. And now I have a nice three-quarter view of my table. My table done. Now I'm almost ready to render it. This is, the, this is the angle that I want to see it. This is what the camera is going to see. In order to render it, I need to select render. And before I do, though, I need to look at render options. I want to make sure that ray trace shadows is turned on. I want to make sure that reflection, transparency, anything else. Even though I don't have any transparency, if I should change the top to glass or something, I want to make sure all those things show up. The other important thing that I need to select is make sure that under render display that I have image viewer selected. What that will do when it's done rendering is it will give me a little snapshot um, of my of, of, the, of the piece that I can that I can save and, and print later on. If I don't do that, it doesn't save it. Yes. Um, okay. How do you how do you change the camera view to? to to get it at Make sure that at down below you have camera selected. Yeah. And then you you use either the move tool under modify okay. or the rotate tool to move the camera. You you'll use the mouse to move the camera. And it's very easy to get lost. Yeah. And if you do change from camera view to top view or change it to perspective view so you can uh -huh. see where you the, the camera is relative to everything else. Got it. Okay, thank you. So for example, if I got lost here, if I switch from camera view to top view, and then I zoom out, here's my, you know, here's my tabletop, here's my camera, here's my light relative to the, the so I get an overview of where everything is. Now I can switch back to camera view. Now I'm ready to render frame. We don't need to render scene because that will ask us to render multiple frames. When you're in Chris, Chris's class and you're rendering movies or you know, animation, you will use render scene. And then you'll determine there how many frames you want to render. I just need to render frame. And now it renders, and there's my cowhide tabletop. And it's all done in a little less than a second, and I can abort. When it's done, and here is my my table, the cow hide top. If I'm not happy with that, there's all kinds of things I can do. Notice that shadows are rendered, so that the tabletop actually casts shadows on the table legs. If I had a base underneath the table, the, ca the table would cast shadows on it. And now, <clears throat> and this is what you will wind up turning into me, not this particular assignment but um, probably will, I'll have you next Wednesday do that. Under file, you can save RGB, and notice these are all the different file formats you can save this image as. Lots, even more than what you would find in Photoshop. What I would like you to do when you're saving them for me is save it as a lightweight Photoshop 24-bit file. And now I'll select that, it will bring up a little window. I'm going to go back to my desktop. And remember, under content, I had a folder to title images. I'll save it as table here. Move. Now I've saved that snapshot. I have a permanent record of how this thing looks when it's done. If I want to now take another snapshot of it from a different angle with different surfaces, I can do that. You can modify this as, 
as often as you like them. You can change it from many angles. Uh, how do you change passes on it? Oh. Um, select camera. Uh, oh, wait, that would be, it could be a couple of different places. And I'm, you're asking me and I'm drawing a blank. There's a couple of places that we can do that. We can go to our render and we can go back to render options and see what we have here. Um, it might be under camera settings, I think. Um, let's go back. So I'm going to select the bottom here, camera, and I'm going to select camera properties. Camera properties. So there's a lot we can do in camera properties to change later on. And later on, um, one of the things, you won't need additional, but one of the things that you'll want to do, you won't need additional passes, you'll just want to change the anti-aliasing. Now, everybody probably doesn't know what the heck I'm talking about, right? I presume you don't. And I, okay? Am I correct? Does everybody, when, when you look at the angle of the edges of the tabletop, you see these jaggies? Yes, no. If you don't, tell me. Then I can zoom in. Okay, you do see it. I want to get rid of that. I want a cleaner view of this. So one of the things that we'll have to do on here, and we'll have to do often, um, it does take longer to render, so at different stages of your model, you'll change this. You'll select cameras, camera properties, and then under anti-aliasing, you'll probably use at least enhanced low under classic. And now when I re-render this, and I render frame, watch, they'll all be gone. It took a little bit longer, four seconds to render this time. But now look, you see those jaggies are gone. Camera, cameras, and camera properties. It's right here under anti-aliasing, it's about midway. There are so many settings in here that we can change that I have not even talked about. You can change camera angles, you can, you know, you can start to add depth of field, you can do all sorts of stuff. But this is really, we'll go back in a, in a short while and do the lamp. I want to turn off my video camera and I'm running out of tape. But this is, you know, this is, these, these are the fundamental steps that you take to do this. Okay? Let me turn off my video camera, and that's what I'll have posted for tomorrow. And then um, I want to walk around and see how all of you are doing with your paper. And then we'll come back and we'll okay, do the lamp. Okay. <clears throat>